And I want us to turn our Bibles, and I spoke about it this morning, and I think I already ruffled a few feathers. But yes, Jesus spoke 70 times, and there are 162 texts in the New Testament alone that refer to the destiny and punishment and suffering of hell to the unrepentant heart. But let's go to what the Apostle Paul speaks about. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due to him for the things done while in the body, whether good nor bad, whether good things or bad things. Now let me give you a background of what Paul is referring to. Many preachers would say Paul was only referring to the unrepentant heart, the sinner. Well, that's not what the commentaries say. That's not what all the cross references say to this passage of scripture. I challenge you, look it up. No, no. Paul was referring to the believers. Paul was solely focusing and speaking to the believers in mind. Because the Corinthian believers had a philosophy. Their theologians loved to philosophize. And their theologians decided to philosophize that it was only the unrepentant heart that could be placed in a place of torment and suffering. But because they went to church and because they believed in the teachings of Jesus, then there's no way they could go to hell. In theory, that is true. But there are conditions to that theory. Grace is a free gift. No man can buy the gift of God. It is an unconditional gift of love. But hear me now. Repentance. And it is only through repentance we can enter into the kingdom of God. It is only through turning away from our former life. Turning away from our sinful lusts. Turning away from our, our fleshly nature. And leaving it behind and walking towards Jesus. Repentance is a daily thing. And it's a choice, it's a discipline, it's an action where we need to choose to turn away from the pleasures of sin. That is a repentant heart. But to, in the times that Paul was addressing the Corinthian believers... They were doing the opposite. Oh, they loved, they loved church. Oh, they would give their tithes and their offerings. They would give to the poor and the needy. They were doing good works. But in their hearts, they did not take hold of repentance as believers. They were involved in sexual immorality. Why do you think Paul addressed them in the context, the cross-references? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sin a man commits is outside of his body. But he who sins sexually sins against his own body. For do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost who is in you, whom you receive from God? You are not your own, but rather you are brought at a price. Understand the, the context of what I'm saying, what Paul was addressing the Corinthian believers. The Corinthian believers were religious, but they had no living relationship. And I want to challenge you, if you are in living relationship with the living God, then you will have a lifestyle of repentance. And you will not be so easily entangled and ensnared with the temptations of the flesh. Amen. 
but rather the temptations of the flesh will offend you. Amen. They will make you sick. Amen. And you will want to flee from those desires because you know that it hurts your beloved King Amen. and Savior. Amen. But it's a discipline. It's a choice. Amen. 